Chapter 6, Area and Volume, Advanced Revision Exercise, Question 2. Circular holes of radius 1 cm are to be cut from a sheet of metal. The sheet of metal measures 1 m by 1 m. There's two methods, A or B could be used as shown above, and we're to calculate the number of holes possible with each method. We'll consider method A first. Here we see that the radius is 1 cm, so the diameter would be 2 cm. Now there's 1 m by 1 m is the metal sheet, which is 100 cm. Now we can fit 50 2 cm holes into 100 cm. So it's 50 going across and 50 going down. So part A is straightforward enough. The total holes would be 50 multiplied by 50, which is 2,500. Now consider method B. This is much more complicated. We still have a radius of one centimeter and it's 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters is the sheet of metal. Now if you consider row one, this is like the first question, there'll be 50 holes in this. Row two, however, has one less hole cut out into it, so that's 49 holes. Now, row three, if we consider that, is the same as the first row, so that would also have 50 holes. And this pattern continues. 50, 49, 50, 49, etc. Well, let's consider row one. Row, row one is the most straightforward row. And the, the height of row one is the same as the diameter, which is two centimeters. So row one takes up two centimeters of space. Every row after that takes up this amount of space that I've highlighted in yellow. Let's call this H for the minute. If we could figure out what h was, we could answer the question straightforward enough. So every extra row after the first takes up h distance. Well, let's consider this triangle going from the centers of these circles. I'm going to draw it on the side here to look at it again. We can see that in this right angle triangle, the base is 2 radii, which is 2. The hypotenuse is 4 radii, which is 4. And we'll call the unknown side x. Like using Pythagoras' theorem, 4 squared <coughs> is equal to 2 squared plus x squared. So we solve Pythagoras' theorem, solve for x. And we see x is equal to the square root of 12 or 2 root 3. That's what x is. I'm going to move that to the side just for a second to consider another interesting height. And it's this height here, between the top and bottom of those two circles. Now I know the radius of each of these circles is one. So the green height must be, I take one plus one, two from x. Now consider this little orange height I'm looking at here, because h is equal to the green height plus this orange height. Now two of these orange height heights plus the green height is the same as one circle, so that must be two. I'm going to call these orange heights y, to use the next letter. So if we consider that the two y's plus the, the two oranges plus the green is the same as one circle, that tells us that two y plus two root three minus two is equal to one diameter, which is two. So neatening this up and to add two to both sides and take two root three from both sides. Now divide your answer by two and we have y is equal to two minus root three. So what's h? Well h is equal to the green plus one of the oranges, which is two root three minus two plus two minus root three. And that's simply root three. So h is root three. And that's the difficult part of the question solved. So we're to figure out how many rows of, of holes altogether. Well, the first row is two centimeters. And the second lot of the next lot of rows take up 98 centimeters. So how many rows fit in? Well, there's the first row, and then there's 
however many times root 3 or h goes into 98. Now, uh, root 3 goes into 98 56.58 times, so we add the 1 onto this and get 57.58. But it must be a whole number of terms. So um, 57 is the, the largest whole number of terms that fit into to this. So of the 57 rows, well, 29 of them would have 50 holes and 28 of them would have 49 holes. So the total number of holes is 29 by 50 and 28 by 49. And this is 2,822. That's the hard part of the question solved, really. So the number of holes in the first was 2,500 and in the second was 2,822. Second question, the percentage waste from each piece of metal. Well, let's first consider the area of a sheet of metal. Well, we will do it in centimetres, centimetres squared. So we have 100 centimetres by 100 centimetres. So the area is length by breadth, which is 100 centimetres multiplied by 100 centimetres, giving us 10,000 centimetres squared. Now the next thing to consider is what is the area of one of the holes? I'm not drawn to scale here. Well, the area of a circle or a disc is pi r squared. In this case, r is equal to one, so it's pi one squared. But one squared is one, so the answer is just pi centimeters squared. A number a little bigger than three. Now, how much metal is used in a? Well. 2,500 holes and each hole is pi, so 2,500 multiplied by pi. And if we put this into calculator, we see that this is approximately equal to uh, 7,854 centimeters squared. That's the metal that's used. So how much is waste metal? Well, the waste metal would be the total metal, which would be 10,000, take away the 7,854 that was used giving 2,146 centimetres squared. Now we're asked to get the percentage of the waste metal. And the percentage waste would be the waste, the actual waste, divided by the total amount of metal multiplied by 100%. So we sub these numbers into the formula. And we see the answer is 21.46 percentage. Now we have to do the same for method B. So the metal used in B, well we know that there's 2,822 discs. Each disc is pi in area. So the total area of these is 8,866 centimeters squared. How much is wasted? Well, the wastage in B would be the total, again, 10,000 take away what was used. And we see that there is 1,134 centimetres squared. So the percentage waste, again, is the same form as the last time. The waste divided by the total. The waste is a fraction of the total multiplied by 100%. And this time we see, when we sub the numbers in, 11.34 percent so it's a quite a lot less wastage much more effective use of the resource method B I'd recommend that